Welcome to another tutorial on complex numbers as part of the Edexcel Further Pure One Maths course. This is my second video to date on complex numbers. As always, we look at what Edexcel says we need to know. Now, in uh, green is what I think we have done in the previous uh, videos. Um, we have defined the complex number, we've talked about what the conjugate is, we've added, uh, multiplied and divided complex numbers, and we've also seen how complex numbers arise from the uh, solutions to quadratic equations. I'm going to talk a lot more about equations and complex numbers in them in another video. This particular video, what we're going to talk about is something quite important. We're going to talk a little bit about the real part and imaginary part of a complex number, which we've already talked about. But here's a key thing. We're going to talk about when complex numbers are equal to each other and how that helps us solve particular problems. Right, the big idea is as follows. Two complex numbers being equal. How can two complex numbers be equal? Well, two complex numbers are equal when both their real and imaginary parts are equal to each other. So if I have a complex number, a plus ib, and I told you it was definitely equal to a complex number, c plus id, the only way that could be true is if their real parts were the same, i.e. if a and c were equal, and if their imaginary parts were the same, i.e. b and d or were equal to each other. So, very simply, if I told you I had a complex number 2 plus 3i, and I told you it was equal to a complex number a plus ib, the only way this could be true was if a was the number 2 and b was the number 3. No other way could two complex numbers be equal unless a was 2 and b was 3. Right, we're going to use that to solve some problems. Let's start straight away with an example. Right, here's what we're using, here's the example. I'm told that a complex number 3 plus 5i is equal to two complex numbers multiplied together. Now, when you multiply two complex numbers, you're going to get another complex number. So I'm going to eventually, when I multiply them out, I'm going to have one complex number equal another. That's going to help me find a and b. Okay, let's do it. Let's see how it might do that for us. On the left-hand side, there's nothing to do we have 3 plus 5i. Let's multiply this out. a times 1 is a. a times i is plus ai. Uh, ib times 1, I'm going to write that as bi. It doesn't matter what, round, what way around you write the ib. And ib times i is plus bi squared. Now, we should remember something. i squared we have defined to be equal to negative 1. So this here, b multiplied by i squared, is going to actually just be negative b. So I can tidy this up. So 3 plus 5i must equal the following. a. Now, I'm going to write plus, I've got a lots of i and b lots of i. So I've got a plus b lots of i. And I've just said that i squared is minus 1, so this would be minus b. 3 plus 5i is therefore equal to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect everything up that's just a real number, and I'm going to collect everything up that's an imaginary part. So I'm going to collect the a and the minus b, so that a minus b. And this here is how many, uh, the imaginary part, a plus b i. Okay? Now, that's a complex number. It's equal to another complex number. The only way that could be true is if the real parts, the 3, was equal to this real part, and if the imaginary part, 5, was equal to this imaginary part. That's the only way it could be true. So therefore, I can deduce that 3 must equal a minus b, and 5 must be equal to a plus b. And they're two simultaneous equations. I might call them equation 1 and equation 2. They both must be true at the same time. So let's solve the simultaneous equations. What might we do? Well, we might add equation 1 plus equation 2. And that would give us that 8 is equal to 2 lots of a. If we add these two equations. So therefore, a must be 8 divided by 2, which is 4. And now we need to get b. 
Well, what does B need to be? If A is 4, we can look at either of these two equations up here. If A is 4, B must be 1. It's the only way it can be true. So B must be 1. And this was the answer to my problem. A is 4 and B is 1. Now, I've used the fact that for two complex numbers, in this case here, to be equal, the real parts must be equal and the imaginary parts must be equal. And I'm done. And that's the idea, that's the theory behind it. Now I've got some questions for you to try yourself. Pause the video, work through these, and make sure you can get the correct answer for all. They all use the same method or idea as I've used above. Some might be slightly different, uh, multiplying out or adding or, or what have you. But the idea about making the real parts the same and the imaginary parts the same is going to help you solve the following problems. In 10 seconds, I'll show you the answer. Off you go. OK, and the answers are as follows. Here are the answers to those questions. Hopefully you were able to work them out using the exact same method as I did in the example. The only one you might have found a bit tricky maybe is 5. So I might just quickly run through how to do question 5 here, because we're going to use those ideas later. On the left-hand side, I've got a complex number, and the left-hand side is no real part, plus a, b, lots of i, so the real part 0, the imaginary part's a, b, and on the right-hand side, I have that the real part is 3a minus b, and the imaginary part is going to be 12i, plus 12i. Now, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. The only way this can be true is if the real parts are equal, so 3a minus b equals 0, and if the imaginary parts are, are equal, so AB is equal to 12. Equation 1 and equation 2. Okay, now I'm going to solve these simultaneously. Um, what we could do, uh, we could maybe from uh, what might be the easiest thing to do. From equation 2, we could rearrange to say that A must be 12 over B and I might call that equation 3. I can substitute equation 3 in equation 1. And I could therefore write that 3a minus... Sorry, uh, 3a, I could therefore write that 3 multiplied by 12 over b must e minus b must equal 0. I've just substituted for a as 12 over b. So this gives me that 36 over b minus b equals 0. Multiplying everything through by b, I would get 36 minus b squared is 0. Adding b squared to both sides and just changing the order, uh, the b squared would be here, but I'm just reversing it. b squared is 36, so b taking square roots must be plus or minus 6. Now if b is plus 6, up in the original uh, equation here, a must be equal to 2, and if b is minus 6, a must be equal to minus 2. And that's a slightly more complicated one. I would expect you to, to lay that really neatly. I know I've just shown it off at the side there, but that's how you would do this harder one. Hopefully all the others were fine. Okay, now I'm going to use this idea to have a go at something else. Um, here's another example we're going to try and do. We are going to try and, the, try and find the square roots of complex numbers. So the question I'm asking you is, let's find the square root of 3 plus uh, 4i. Now, I'm trying to find, here's a bit of side working, don't have to write this down, but the square root of 3 plus 4i, I'm taking the square root of a complex number, that's certainly going to be equal to a complex number. Taking the square root of a complex number, I'm going to have an answer that is complex. And so in general, say it's a plus ib. What I could do is square both sides, and that would tell me that 3 plus 4i is this general complex number squared. And the idea of this now, I'm going to expand this bracket out, equate real parts, equate imaginary parts to find a and b. So that's what I'm going to try and do here. And uh, I'm going to use this line here. But to rephrase it and say it one more time, finding the square root of 3 plus 4i 
is the same thing as finding the complex number a plus ib that squares up to give you 3 plus 4i. Expanding this out, I would get a squared plus 2ab multiplied by i plus ib all squared. And I would say that's equal to 3 plus 4i. Now, ib squared, let's consider this over here. You'll get good at this and not having to uh, write it each time. But ib squared is the same thing as i squared b squared. And I know that i squared is minus 1, so this must be equal to minus b squared. So I can use that over here. I can say that I'm going to collect all the real parts together. That's a real number. And this is going to be minus b squared. That's a real number. So I can say that a squared minus b squared that's the real part, plus 2ab, lots of i, that's got to be equal to 3 plus 4i. Okay? Now, I've got one complex number on the left equal another complex number on the right. I can therefore say that a squared minus b squared must be 3. It has to be. The real part has to equal this real part. And on the other hand, I could say that 2ab must equal 4. So 2ab must equal 4. Here are two equations, 1 and 2. I'm going to solve them simultaneously. So what I could do is from 2, I could say that a is 4 over 2b, which is simply 2 over b. Call that 3. And I could sub substitute equation 3 in equation 1. Okay? So, I would get four, uh, I would get 2 over b all squared, so I'm going to get 2 over b squared minus b squared equals 3. Square that out, I would get 4 over b squared minus b squared equals 3. Times everything by b squared, uh, just to uh, remove the b squared on the denominator. So 4 minus b to the power of 4 must equal 3b squared. Now I'm going to subtract 4 off both sides and I'm going to add b to the power of 4 to both sides. So I'm going to get 0 equals b to the 4 plus 3b squared minus 4. Now, this is like a quadratic equation. Uh, you can try and factorise this. It's like a quadratic, um, except for um, it's got b to the power of 4. So how could you factorise this? Well, this would be b squared and b squared there to get you your b to the 4. And it would be b squared, uh, that might be plus 4, and that might be minus 1. That will give you this uh, out here. So, continuing on, I'm going to continue on over here. So, I'm just going to point, put an arrow up here. Continuing on, these two brackets are equal to zero. So, on the one hand, b squared must equal one. And on the other hand, b squared must be negative four. Now, I have chosen a and b to be real numbers. So, b squared, the can't, there's not a real number that squares to give minus four. So I'm going to ignore this set of solutions. From this one, b is either 1 or b is minus 1. And I've found my b's. How do I find my a's? I go back to one of my original equations like this one. I know a is 2 over b. So for, if, a, if b was 1, then a would be 2 over 1, which is 2. And if b was negative 1, a would be 2 divided by negative 1, which is negative 2. So what are the square roots then? The square roots of this are the complex numbers 2 plus i, so where a is 2 and b is 1, and the other uh, answer would be minus 2 or negative 2 subtract i. And they are the two answers to my problem here, um, the square roots of 3 plus 4 i. Just a quick reminder how we did it. Finding the square root of a complex number is the same as finding the complex number that squares to give you that number. Expand out the brackets, equate real and coefficient parts, solve a fairly complicated 
um, uh, um, simultaneous equation by substitution and factorising. At the end, after you found your A and your B, state the two sets of complex numbers you found. Right, I've got a few examples for you to try yourself exactly like this. Pause the video, work through them. In 10 seconds, I'll give you the answer. Okay, and the answers are as follows. Here are the answers uh, to these questions. By this, I mean uh, one of the answers is 4 plus 3i, and the other answer is minus 4 minus 3i. I mean that for all of these. So for each of these, there are two sets of answers. Hopefully, you're able to find all of them using the exact same method I talked about. Okay, and then to finish with just a bit of direction towards the book, I would say now just read chapter 1, page 21, 22, and 23, look at those examples, and then have a look at exercise 1G, page 23, try all the questions. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it useful.